Good morning. It's Tuesday the 2nd of May 2023 and I've just walked past Strines Reservoir. I've parked my car on Mortimer Road which is just up the hill and I parked in a rough layby there. I'm doing a, a walk which is about seven miles today. But yeah, I couldn't get too close to Strines Reservoir on this side but hopefully later on in the walk I'll be closer to it when I'm on that side. From the top right hand corner of Strines Reservoir, I followed a track taking me northeastwards. signposted to Bradfield now, although I'm not going to Bradfield today. This is a permissive path which is skirting around a property called Hallfield. Looks like a very nice house actually. I can just about see it from a distance. I can't see it now because it's got hedges in front of it. So it's a very private. Beyond Hallfield, my walk continued in the same direction, soon following a track called Hall Lane. path emerged onto a lane just above Thompson House. Carrying on northeastwards, I walked along Dale Road. Just under half a mile, I turned right down a track at a public footpath sign. The Dale Dyke disaster. Although little known today, the breaching of the Dale Dyke Dam in 1864 remains amongst the worst man-made disasters in British history. Wow. Well, I won't try and read all this now, so when I get to the reservoir itself in a bit, I'll be able to talk about it then. The track swung sharply to the left then slowly to the right again. We're just heading towards the dam now. Just up there. Excellent. So, today's walk then. As I said earlier, it's about seven miles. It's another route that I've plotted myself. Another completely new walk. And uh, to say, it all falls within Sheffield in the South Yorkshire Peak District. Uh, I've sort of visited a couple of the places on this walk, but this whole route is completely new again.
interesting. I was now heading southwest as my woodlands path approached the second of two reservoirs I would be seeing on today's walk. This old building was. I wonder what it was used for. It looks like it's still being used as well. Lock on the door doesn't look very old, so I'm guessing that somebody comes in and out of here at some point. Something to do with the reservoir, I suspect. I'm going to guess that it's something to do with controlling the dam and the sluice or something, I don't know. Opening sluice gates for the dam. Perhaps there's a water pump in there as well. Looks like a little church in some ways. <laughs> This is a nice pleasant walk beside the reservoir now. Dale Dyke Reservoir. Never walked beside it before. Just seen it from the distance. Because you can see it from some of the lanes that you drive along up in the hills there. Yeah. And bearing in mind that I know it's still Bank Holiday Week, but it's the day after the Bank Holiday Monday. Hopefully it'll be a lot quieter than yesterday's walk was. I've seen one person so far, just walking his dog. But I'm not really expecting to see too many people today, he says. Probably famous Lars words there. <laughs> Dale Dyke Reservoir was constructed between 1859 and 1864 by the Sheffield Waterworks Company to guarantee a supply of water to power the mills downstream and to supply drinking water to the growing population of Sheffield. The architect was John Gunson. At 11.30 p.m. on the 11th of March, 1864, the day after the reservoir was finally full, the newly built dam failed. Over 690 million imperial gallons of water cascaded down the valley causing the Great Sheffield Flood, which caused massive damage downstream along the Loxley and Don and through the centre of Sheffield, destroying over 5,000 properties and killing 244 people. The dam was rebuilt in 1875 and is still in use owned by Sheffield Water, now used exclusively for domestic purposes. Reaching the other end of the reservoir, I took a path off to the left, climbing up to exit the woodland. Ooh, I nearly missed this style. <laughs> it's quite well hidden, so you've got to look out for it. As I was continuing beside the stream, I could just see a footbridge over it ahead, but I know that looking at the map, the path doesn't go over the, the footbridge, so the path I needed was just off to the left before, so that's it. So yeah, it's very easy to miss. <laughs> yeah. As I climbed on, I was now following a short section of the Sheffield Country Walk. Well, I'm a 
approaching the dam for Strines Reservoir now. You can see where I was this morning as well. Next to that house over there, that's near where I started my walk. But you can't walk across the dam unfortunately. But hopefully, in a moment, I'll get a much better view of Strines Reservoir. Just taking a breather a minute. <laughs> it's quite a steep climb this. However, I'm rewarded with some wonderful views. And the view back towards Dale Dyke Reservoir is absolutely awesome. Look at that. Continuing to rise above Strines Reservoir now. When I was at that house this morning, that's the closest I was to it. Um, and there's no public access actually right beside the water side. So this is this is the only way that goes alongside it really. But wow, what a view. Can't complain at all. Well, thankfully, I'm at the top, so no more climbing for today. But as with all climbs, just a look at that view. Isn't it worth it? You can see both reservoirs now. Anyway, I'm at another highlight of today's walk, and that's Boots Folly. <laughs> Boots Folly then, otherwise known as Sugworth Tower. Okay, I'll see if I can get a closer look at it. The 45 foot high, grade two listed Boots Folly, known also as Sugworth Tower or Strines Tower, was built in 1927 by Charles Boot, who lived at nearby Sugworth Hall. It is thought that he built the folly to provide work for the hall's workmen during the Depression. There is also a theory that it was built so Boots could see the churchyard at High Bradfield, where his wife was buried, who had died in 1926 at the age of 56. Right, let's be a devil. Let's go and have a look inside. Ah. Oh wow. I mean it's just an empty shell but it's still interesting. The interior originally had a large furnished room at the top from where the Boot family could enjoy the view. There was a spiral staircase but it was removed after a cow got stuck climbing the stairs. Yeah, interesting. Okay. I should go back out into the daylight now. <laughs> Excellent. I really enjoyed having a look around Boots Folly. First time I've been this close up to it. Yeah. Seen it from a distance many times and it always looks impressive. Yeah, I enjoyed that. Anyway, before I move on, I'm going to give a shout out to Steve and Karen. Howdy folks, how the devil are we? <laughs> now Steve, he has a YouTube channel which is called A Tramp in the Hills and I love his channel, it's fantastic. Now let me just read out what he's actually put on his notes on his YouTube channel. I'm just a bloke, a bloke that enjoys nothing more than getting out into the countryside. Originally a Suffolk boy, I moved up to South Yorkshire nearly 20 years ago so I was closer to my beloved hills. 20 years later, and I love them even more. I am usually to be found mooching around the Peak District or in the pub. If you see me out on the hill, don't be shy, say hi. Well, I hope I do see you out on the hill sometime, Steve, because I love watching your channel. Um, what I like about Steve, 
The main thing for me is that he is funny. Whenever I watch one of his videos, I always finish with a smile on my face because he's, he's really brilliant, he's really funny. And quite often he's on his own in his videos. Sometimes he's got Karen with him. And, and when he has got Karen with him, he sometimes says, I've brought my glamorous assistant with me today, he says. <laughs> but yeah, often sort of like Steve says, howdy folks, how the devil are we? And some of his videos he said, uh, come on, are you coming with me? Come on, then he says, come on, come on. <laughs> He's just really funny, and um, I do remember in one of his videos, he'd actually visited one of these follies. Anyway, yes, he'd been to this folly, and afterwards he stopped to have his lunch, and as he was taking his rucksack off, he just looked at the camera and he said, enjoying it? <laughs> And I just thought that was hilarious. That is Steve all over. Please do check his channel out, A Tramp in the Hills. It's one of my favourite channels, I have to say. And you will not be disappointed, A Tramp in the Hills. From Boots Folly, I headed towards Sugworth Hall, next to which my path continued. Tight. <laughs> Breathe in. Oh, oh no, not too bad. <laughs> I still think people were much thinner in those days when those kind of styles were built. I've got quite a bit of road bashing to do now before I reach my next highlight of the walk, which is near the end of the walk, really. But uh, you could argue that this will be the dullest stretch of the walk because it's all road walking. However, you get some fantastic views from the road, so I wouldn't say it's dull in that respect. Reaching a T-junction at a road sign, I turned right to follow the road in the direction of Strines Moor. After about a mile and a half, I was approaching a wonderful place with its very special inn. I'm nearly at the end of my walk now, and what a fantastic place to end it. I've reached the lovely settlement of Strines. The building that now houses the Strines Inn was originally a manor house built in 1275. Over the years, it was extended and eventually converted into an inn in 1771. The word strine is an old English term for the meeting of water, which is appropriate as the inn overlooks the nearby strines reservoir. And this is the wonderful strines inn and I'm going to finish the day with a pint. Pint of Strines Gold. Very nice way to end today's walk. Well, I can have one, can't I? I love the Strines Inn. Don't come here as much as I used to. But it's a lovely place, yeah. I do like it here. Now I did hear them earlier, but I haven't seen them yet, but they have peacocks here, so I've got to see if I can spot any. not seen any just yet, but I'm sure I'll spot one or two in a minute. Anyway, I'll drink up and I'll walk back to my car. It's only a few yards up the road, so cheers. <laughs>